I'm going to use my dendrobium berry odor as a classic example of orchids that have been doing so well for us for many, many years without any kind of other issues, no climate changes, no setup changes. Everything stays the same and yet they decline. This doesn't necessarily have to happen with a berry odor, so please do not panic if you have one and think that something like this is in the future of your berry odor. It can happen to any orchid, no matter how vigorous she has been for many, many years. The only thing we can do to intervene is to be able to assess the symptoms of stress ahead of time, intervene to reduce the stress, knowing that the future of the orchid has a massive repot ahead of her, giving us then the opportunity to do a complete reset and start the orchid from scratch. Now, in order to analyze what went wrong with my berry odor, I can only say that my guess, and I think it's a calculated guess, is that she had a massive repot two years ago in which I took off 50% of the orchid and then potted her up and thought nothing of it. There was plenty of her left. Well, dendrobiums are prone to throwing out cakeys when they are in a stress mode. While I am surprised that that radical intervention made such a huge difference to initiate her decline, it doesn't matter either way. Fact is, she has declined and she will not improve unless we start to do something about it right now, make her look a little bit better and make her a quarter of the size, depending on how we go about this, which is something that you and I will discover together as we get into the orchid, get her unpotted, and then also see where the divisions will be, which ones can be good candidates for a brand new start of my berry oda. So welcome to the patio. I am so glad you're here. Let's check out what's going on with berry oda. This is her before shot. <laughs> She's going to look much, much different afterwards. And without a doubt, not this size. <laughs> I already know pretty much which two pieces I can keep without causing too much of a problem. And that is, there's two new growths right here. So that's where my eye is heading straight away. But I'm jumping ahead because first of all, we have to remove a single viable keiki that has active root tips. So we are going to save this little guy. Everything else that you see with root tips coming out, well, that's an experiment because this is a spike that has produced roots. And I'm still wondering if it's going to produce a new growth at the base. So I'm watching and observing that. And that is why I would like to make sure that this cane stays in one piece with a division. So there's a lot, a lot of things that we need to consider here. See how wobbly she is? The roots are shot, even though I have active root tips in the pot. That's why I'm starting this now, because the new growths are not starting new roots just yet. It should be pretty easy to get her out just by lifting her because to have such shriveled canes, there's only one reason and that is dead roots. Now to figure out where these roots belong to, because we would like to carry them over. We don't want to lose them. If she's just going to fall apart on us easily, even better then I don't have to make any cuts. Also, being mindful of the active root tips that I do have on my experimental keikis. <laughs> Come with me. This is great. We've got the active root tips on this side and on this side. That's great. I guess I need to make a cut in here. Maybe not. Ah, even better. That's one. Just see where she's falling apart. I want to make sure that if I can start more pieces, then at least I want to have enough structure to join whatever new piece I'm starting. It's a dendrobium, so there's a chance for this to also make it. Very set back, but there's a chance. And then clean out all the back structures here that I can, or where is she falling apart? Uh, let's respect the front growth bit. There we go. Another piece. 
And let's see, we can get rid of all these back canes right here, which could also be newberry odors, but I think that we don't need to try and propagate those because we've got plenty of cakeys. However, this could be a good piece as well because it's got a lot of structures, even though it wants to fall apart right here. So we'll take that off and get at some of the older canes in the back. Comme ça. This is all falling apart. But there's plenty of pieces here that I could restart. And seeing as this orchid lives outside in my climate all year round, it really isn't that big a problem to have so many bits of Berioda that if they get established again, I can pass on to others. And this one has active roots. So we are going to take advantage of that. Looking pretty nasty at the moment, but we shall be cleaning this up and giving every rhizome a good, good spray. When it comes to resetting an orchid, this is what it's about. Not necessarily this many pieces, but it really means finding good pieces of the orchid to then set aside and start again. So we'll just let that soak for a minute and then we'll start move it, removing some sheaths. Here's the one with the new growth, which is important for us. And the question is, see, I wanted to carry that over, but it's falling apart. So we'll just allow it to fall apart. Sorry if I'm out off camera there. Sorry about that. I just took some old canes that are not here nor there anymore off, even though it has a cakey that I would like to see if that would grow on. So we'll be kinder to this piece. We won't be as radical because we need that new growth, which is very, very interesting to see that it is starting new roots. There we go. That's great. We'll just clean the rhizome at the base from the back. We have a piece here that has a cakey at the top, which I would like to keep. This is what alerted me last summer. The fact a new growth would rot out made no sense at all. Not for what I was doing and how I was treating it and for the time of year when it rotted out. Shouldn't have happened. One of the big things when it comes to vigorous orchids that are blooming for a very, very long time, they can very quickly exhaust themselves. So I'm hardly surprised that this has happened, with the exception, of course, that it happened to a berry odor where climatic influences were an actual fact, not the culprit. Different to my other orchids that have declined because of the colder winters. That's not the case with this one. So we've got the repot, the radical division when it happened, and we've also got the fact that this orchid is such a vigorous bloomer. It is in bloom for a super long time and this has probably all added up to exhausting her. Anywho, that's a great piece right there. Would you please give this video a thumbs up? I would so appreciate it as well as subscribe to the channel because we've got other orchids to deal with with similar issues. We're going to restart them, reset them, divide them, pot them up, all that fun orchid stuff. So all of that is coming up and there's plenty of information on my channel as well about other orchid related things with a lot of information. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in a bit. In preparation now for an assembly line style of potting up, I'm just going to prepare all the supports ahead of time and I will talk you through why I'm choosing to keep which pieces so that if you have a similar situation, you can follow my thought process as to what I'm going to try and achieve with what I have left that I consider viable. So the first piece I'm giving a chance is this piece because it has some viable roots, even though it has no new growth at the base, but there is a cakey or two on a single cane that I want to see if they can please mature so that we can use them in future to pop them up separately. And with any luck, it is possible that we are going to get a new growth at the base. That remains to be seen though. Once these orchids start to produce cakeys on canes, they usually do not then also produce a new growth at the the base of the same cane. So we'll see what happens with this one. Despite no new growth on this piece, it has two canes with beautiful leaves on it, plenty of structures in the back. Vamos a ver if this one is going to grow a new growth at the base at some point. And that's why I'm keeping it. It looks pretty good to me. 
Here are two pieces in the same pot. They both have new growth at the base, one new growth per piece. Plus there is something super interesting happening with one of the canes. It had a hybrid cakey spike with roots growing. And for the first time, that is actually growing a growth at the base. That's never happened before. So I'm keeping this one intact, even though, spoiler alert, the new growth at the base of that piece has rotted out. So I was a little bit rough, I guess, when it came to repotting or separating but that new growth at the base is no more however I have not done anything with this piece I want to see if that basal growth from that spike cakey hybrid I want to see if that one will grow and then we can pop it off and pot it up despite not having any new growth at the base of this piece look at the cakey that it's got growing with new roots at the base beautiful long root already extending yeah, I would like to see that mature a little bit more because I would like to take advantage of it. <laughs> and then I have two pieces that I'm a little bit in doubt about. However, I want to try something out. This one has no cakeys on the canes and no viable eyes at the base, but the base isn't as yellow yet. It is possible that this piece is not going to do anything, but I am super curious to see if it's just going to decline because the canes are shot, there's nothing going to happen, or if it is actually going to push something in order to survive now that it has nothing to depend on. So I'm very interested to see what's going to happen here even if they declined Hakuna Matata because the next piece has a gorgeous keiki coming at the top with extended roots already even though the bases are super yellow compared to the other two canes we saw just now nothing will come from the bases of these but still for me the keiki is why I am keeping this piece as well and I'm putting it into this ICU setup. So if you have any thoughts or are wondering whether I did the right thing with the way I dismantled my berry Oda, seeing as she had exhausted herself to restart her, now we have many of them. We became Dendrobium berry Oda central on the patio. <laughs> anyway, if you have any thoughts or questions, leave them in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you even if you don't have any questions thank you so so much for giving this video a like for subscribing to the channel and thank you so much for the support for watching to the end because now i get to wish you a beautiful day on the condition though please that you stay safe take care bye